G'day folks. Oh, well, I figured I'd uh, give the uh, random Mercedes-Benz Vito Bosch alternator a bit of a run. Uh, even the guy I got it off doesn't really know its story. It was just given to him by a friend. So, who the hell knows what's up with it? All I know is it's brand new. Like, it has been on a car, but they pulled it off shortly afterwards because something was going on. I'm guessing it's to do with this silly one-way clutch, which is a bit unnecessary, but there's a proper one-way clutch on that thing, and these do go bad and starts howling and carrying on when the when it goes into freewheel mode, they can howl and squeal and carry on. So we'll see what happens when I just run it off a normal electric motor. I can't actually test proper vehicle driving conditions as it is. So everything's back together again. Brushes are all brand new. It's it's done maybe five or ten miles before they decided to can it. Going to drive it with one horsepower three phase motor off a of VFD. We've got voltmeter attached to the battery, which is a little bit low. Uh, this one came out of the Jag just before I got rid of it, and I've had it on charge for about two hours. So it's showing voltage, but there probably isn't much current in it. And it should be interesting. Now, in order to get an automotive alternator, or at least most of them, some are self-exciting, but most need an excitation charge that goes through a 5-watt normal incandescent lamp usually the charge lamp that's on the dashboard that light will go out once this thing excites it's like a woman you've got to tickle it the right way not too hard though or you burn it out <laughs> so if you put straight 12 volt from the battery to the exciter you'll d damage or destroy the alternator so you've got to run it through a 5 watt lamp not an LED lamp either they don't work but you actually want a proper 5 watt incandescent lamp so we're all hooked up, we've got voltage monitoring, we've got amperage monitoring coming out of the B plus terminal on the alternator. Some makes have a multi-pin plug for monitoring and controlling it. This one just has exciter and B plus and obviously the case is negative to battery and negative clamp just goes straight to the table. So the whole table's battery negative, battery positive is coming off here. So that's main charging amps output to the, through the meter it's a straight inline meter and straight to the battery which is this wire here so let's spin it up and see what happens high pitch squeal or high pitch free alternating frequency you can hear will come from this but the alternator will start whining if it's working Once you get the revs up, it should excite and start. There we go. You can hear it. That's better. I like this multimeter, it's pretty good. Ah, out of range. It's correct. Optimum charging amps. Not even spinning that fast. The motor's at almost 50 hertz, so 1420 RPM, which is just above idle speed for a normal engine, or at least cruising speed on some of these cars. That's quite good, actually. You don't have to spin the nuts off it to get it to do anything. So it does work. I believe it may be the uh, one-way clutch squeals if you suddenly decelerate or stop the engine. Fourteen point three, fourteen point four. That's fine. If you go to fifteen volts or above, a lot of these batteries will start boiling, and you get a lot of hydrogen gas and other stuff coming off them. <coughs> Not to mention your onboard electronics probably won't like it either. Uh, faster shouldn't do anything. Yeah, regulator staying stable. 100 hertz. Hundred and forty six, hundred and fifty hertz. 
motor's not really rated for that. <laughs> Nothing on the meter, barely taking anything. Yeah, these motors aren't really rated for that kind of speed or frequency. But then VEG do make a nice motor. It's made in Brazil. And the voltage remains stable. It does drop a little bit. It'll drop to about 13.8 or something if it gets really hot. And that's typical of them. You actually hear more noise from the motor now because it's labouring. The alternator's not getting warm. The regulator's a bit warm. But still. Diodes are cold. Yeah. Rectifier diodes are cold. I'm not sure what voltage comes off the windings themselves, but it can't be that high. If it is, I'll know about it. <laughs> Zap. It's three phase alternating current going through the rectifier to the regulator and everything. It comes out as a normal straight DC output. Yeah, there's not enough load. I'm going to have to add some load to this and see what it does. The motor's making more noise than the alternator, but if I put that under a shitload of load, it'll probably start slipping the belt and uh, howling its head off. Anywho, I'll set up a load later. Yeah, voltage is up a bit. But it's mainly just cranking amps into that battery. It does need a really good charge. So I'll let this run for a bit longer and uh, set up a load. Maybe uh, we'll try introducing a couple of radiator fans. That'll definitely slip the belt. Probably too much amperage. Even a single radiator fan will be a bit. Um, yeah, I think I've got a tiny little one off a of VS Commodore or something that'll do the job. Thanks for watching.